Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. Also, always, 1776.com. Today is Thursday, September 29th, 2022. Let's talk about the Admin Syed case a little bit more now that he's been released from prison, at least for now. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Adnan Syed, at least for now, has been released. I don't have any of the new evidence that prosecutors are claiming was withheld from the defense. I don't know, as I make this video, whether that new evidence is credible, whether that new evidence incriminates someone else. So for this video, let's play along and let's try to see if the arguments being made by Adnan Syed supporters hold water, right? Let me also pivot right here. I want supporters of Adnan Syed to know that they have my authorization to use whatever part of this video they want to use to critique the arguments and to make their own arguments, right? I heard from a lot of people and I saw myself that in an HBO show that was pro Syed, they used a clip from an earlier video that I made, right? Very short one or two second clip. I was to represent that part of the public that for whatever reason believes that Syed murdered his ex-girlfriend, which I still believe, right? What I want supporters of Adnan to understand is they can use as much of this video as they like, right? I'm not going to claim copyright infringement. In fact, I'm posting this video under a Creative Commons license so you can use it, right? If I'm full of hot air, if there are parts where I'm wrong and you want to correct me because... The evidence shows that Adnan is innocent, then please feel free to do so. I want to encourage the many people who have done serial related videos to allow their videos to be cut and pasted and dissected as well. Because what's important to me is that we get this right, right? I don't believe that any of us want a murderer walking free among us. If he did the crime, then he should be sent back to prison. So let's explore the claims of those, as I understand them, who believe Adnan is innocent. Let's also use our common sense. I believe it's a mistake to look at individual facts in isolation. When, of course, theories on the case fall apart as you broaden the scope of the view. Let's have a real macro view here. So it is March of 1998. Syed and Lee start dating. They go to prom. Adnan is named prom king. Homecoming in October of 1998 doesn't go so well. Adnan's parents show up and are upset that their son is at a mixed gender dance. Let's just say that Adnan's parents are religious. They're socially conservative. They don't want their high school son dating. Now, on November 1st, Adnan and Hay break up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to what I believe is a correct timeline 
in the description section of this video. Right? If that timeline is correct, please let me know. If that timeline is incorrect, let me know that too. That'll give researchers an opportunity to see where I've gotten my facts and where the facts I've gotten may be incorrect. But understand, on November 1st, it's my understanding that admin did not want to break up. Now, Hay has a new job at a lens crafters, and she's excited because she wants to be an optician. Her diary tells us she's also excited because there is an older guy there named Dom that she's interested in. She writes a note to Admin in which she calls Admin hostile and cold. The relationship they have is dysfunctional. On November 14th, they get back together, only to break up again on December 20th. On December 23rd, the day before Christmas Eve, Hay's car breaks down at her lens crafter's job. Who do you think she calls? Admin. He comes. He meets Dom. This is two days before Christmas and three weeks before Hay goes missing. On January 1st, Hay and Don start dating. On January 12th, 1999, right? We're now into 1999. On January 12th, Admin gets a new phone and calls Hay, as well as others. The next day, January 13th, 1999, Admin lends his phone the brand new phone, and his car to Jay Wiles, so Jay can buy Jay's girlfriend Stephanie a birthday gift. That day, January 13th, 1999, at 2.25 p.m., Heyman Lee is last seen buying food at Woodlawn High and then driving away in her gray Nissan to pick up her six-year-old cousin from kindergarten. She goes missing. She never arrives to pick up the six-year-old. Now, supporters of Adnan want you to believe some alternative scenarios, right? The first is that Adnan had nothing to do with his ex-girlfriend, Heyman Lee's disappearance. Now let's pivot here and let's think this through, right? I believe common sense rules the day here, right? So either Hay disappears on her own. In other words, she decides to strand her six-year-old kindergarten attending cousin and her family who are relying on her to pick up the toddler to pursue some personal agenda. Or, it's an either or, folks. Hay is abducted and killed by someone else. Perhaps Jay, the drug dealer, who Adnan lent his car. Perhaps her new boyfriend, whose superior at Lens Crafter was his mom, who theoretically might lie to police to protect her son. Perhaps a stranger. Maybe Hay has secrets. Maybe Hay had someone else, maybe someone he didn't even know personally, abducted and killed her. Now let's explore the Adnan had nothing to do with his ex-girlfriend's disappearance scenario. 
According to this scenario, he didn't know Hay was missing until a little after 6 p.m when he received a call from an officer Adcock while he was hanging out with Jay Wiles at Jay's friend's Kathy's house. Right, Kathy, a name I've seen in quotes everywhere, may or may not be an accurate name. Just understand that Jay and Admin, a little after six, when Adnan gets a call from the police, are at the house of a friend of Jay's who will call Kathy. Now, Adnan lends Jay his car before then, and Jay drops him off at school at 11.30 a.m. Adnan claims that at the time Hay went missing, approximately 2.25 p.m., he was at Woodlawn Public Library, where he went to check his email. Now, let's remember, he can't do it on his phone because Jay had his phone. At the library, a friend, Asia McLean, who contacted the police several weeks later when Adnan was arrested, claims she spoke with Adnan in the library that day. Adnan claims that after going to the library, he went to track practice. Jay would later pick him up from track practice. After some driving and, these are teenagers, some smoking, the two would go to Jay's friend's, Kathy's house, where he received the call from Officer Adcock. Adnan claims that he then goes home at around 7 p.m. He picks up food to take to his father, who's at the mosque, where he spends the rest of the evening. In this scenario, Adnan is an innocent who lent a friend his car and cell phone. He then spent the day at school. But there is a problem with this scenario, and it is big. Adnan claims he is dropped off at school by Jay at 11.30 a.m. He next sees Jay between 4.30 and 5 p.m. when Jay picks him up at track practice. He's with Jay until 7-ish when he goes home. But yet, Jay knows where missing Hay's car is. Two big questions. How and why? Let's talk about the how first. According to Adnan's version, Adnan doesn't see Jay from 11.30 a.m. to 4.30-ish p.m a period of about five hours. He doesn't know what Jay did during that period of time. If Jay did anything to Hay, Adnan wasn't involved. How could Jay do anything to Hay by himself? Let's ask that question. Jay didn't have his own car. He is one man in his friend's car. Right? He's by himself in Adnan's car. Logistically, let's think about this. Logistically, how could he attack Hay, move her car, and get back in Adnan's car by himself without help? We know he spent some of his time buying his girlfriend Stephanie a birthday gift. How would he then be able to pivot and logistically kill Hay by himself before picking up Adnan at track practice? And by himself, what would he do with her body? Let's explore, let's explore the how a little further. 
If Jay were to have kidnapped Hay, how would he do that by himself? He starts the day without a car. Did he have a place to take her? Did he have a way to restrain her? Adnan supporters point to Hay's body lividity and argue that for her to have had that specific body lividity, she would have to have been face down for hours and could not have been buried a little after 7 p.m., as prosecutors suggest. Well, she's seen at 2.25 p.m. at the high school. How would Jay by himself kidnap her, keep her in captivity, while then returning to pick up Adnan two hours later from track practice? Now let's explore the why. This question is almost never asked. Why would Jay want to murder Hay? There is no evidence. Let me repeat that. There is no evidence that Jay had an unpleasant or dysfunctional relationship with Hay. He never dated Hay. Jay had his own girlfriend. He had already graduated from high school. What would be his motive? Let's talk about some other problems with the admin knows nothing scenario. Besides Jay knowing where Hay's car is. One big problem for admin are the phone records. Now this is important. I am not talking about the cell phone tower records that are now disputed. Rather, I'm talking about the fact that Admin's phone received calls while Jay had the phone. Jay claims some of these calls were from Admin in furtherance of Hayes' murder. Jay could not make this claim if there were no received calls. If there were no received calls, Jay could not contend that he communicated with admin. But there are calls on the call log, unspecified incoming calls, including a five second call made at 2.36 p.m that prosecutors believe was made shortly after Hay was strangled to death. There are calls at 7.09 and 7.16 p.m. that Adnan received that Jay was able to tell the cops about because he was with Adnan at that time. How would Jay know about those calls if he wasn't with Admin. Jay claims those calls were received when the two were in Lincoln Park burying Hayes' body. Now, there were other witnesses who the public, in my opinion, doesn't discuss enough. After Jay receives Adnan's car, he goes to his friend, Jen Pusateri's house and plays video games with her brother. The brother is a witness to what Jay did during that time. With the brother, Jay then goes to a mall to buy his girlfriend Stephanie her birthday gift. Jay and the brother then return to Jen Pusateri's home. In addition, Jen returns home from work. Significantly, Jay is not involved in stalking Hay during that time. Jay is not even at the high school during that time. Adnan's phone has an incoming call at 3.15 p.m. Jay claims Adnan called him around this time to ask him to pick up Adnan at a Best Buy. The phone records show a call was received. 
This is consistent with the idea that Admin lent Jay his new phone as part of his plan to kill Hay. The existence of the phone calls on the phone log is strong evidence that supports Jay's testimony. Don't confuse this evidence with the disputed cell phone tower evidence. Now let's talk about Jen Pusateri. The police look up the phone calls on Admin's phone and see calls made on January 13th, the day Hay goes missing, to Pusateri. So the police contact her. They talk to her, and this is important, before they talk to Jay. In other words, the cops don't know the story. They just have the phone logs. They see calls to an individual. They say, okay, let's talk to that individual. Pusateri admits in her first interview with the police that she lied. At that first interview, she claimed to know nothing. Now, let's just talk here as human beings. A lot of these true crime cases come down to common sense. If Jen truly knew nothing, why get involved? Wouldn't she just stick to the original interview? Why suddenly commit perjury? The first interview would have been fine. She knows nothing. She tells the cops she knows nothing. Ends her involvement. But that's not what happened, folks. The pivot here is one you need to look at. In her second interview, and I have the transcript a link to the transcript in the comment section of this YouTube video. It's one of the most important pieces of evidence in this case. In the second interview, and again, this is before the cops have questioned Jay. She told the police that Jay had told her that Adnan told him that Adnan had strangled Hay because she had broken his heart. Right? Jen Pusateri changes her story in that second interview. She makes her life complicated. I believe this shows that her second story is truthful. Her first story is the easy way out. That's not the path she chooses. I believe she is credible in 1999. To the critics, have at that what you wish. Just understand. In the story, she reveals some facts which provide a fuller picture. She says she wanted to hang out with her friend Jay on January 13th and offered to pick him up, as she usually did, as Jay did not have a car. Jay agreed, which shows he did not expect to have a car that day. Right, folks, there are no plans to travel to Woodlawn High and to abduct anyone because the guy has no transportation. In fact, the guy has plans to hang out with Jen, his good friend from way back. Right? He calls back. And she says that he said, you don't have to pick me up. He now has a car and will meet her at her place. He arrives at her house between 1 and 1.30 p.m. He tells her he's expecting a call at 3.30 p.m. 
he does not provide details. Right? He has a phone. He normally doesn't have a phone. Right? No car, no phone guy. But he has a phone. He doesn't explain to Jen whose phone it is. He gets a call around 3.30ish, possibly later, and leaves. She leaves shortly thereafter to run errands. She gets back home around 6.30 and eats some dinner. She and Jay are supposed to be hanging out at one of her friend's places that night. She gets a page from him. Now the page is sent from Adnan's phone to Jen at 7 p.m. It is confusing, so she calls him back. Adnan answers the call. This is likely the 709 call to Adnan's phone. It's clear that Jay and Adnan are together. This contradicts Adnan's version of events. Right, Jay and Adnan are together at 7.09 p.m. Adnan tells Jen that Jay will call her back when he is ready to get picked up. There are text messages sent to Jay's phone, excuse me, pages, sent to Jen's phone at 8.04 and 8.05 p.m. Here again, this contradicts Adnan's version of events, which would have him on his own at home in the process of going to the mosque to deliver food to his dad, not with Jay, communicating with Jen using the phone. Now, Jen remembers being told to meet Jay at the Westview Mall parking lot in front of Value City. Now, what I want people to do right here, because to me, this seals the case. At a minimum, it shows that Adnan's version of events is incorrect. On page 14 of Jen's statement to the police, and again, the link to Jen's statements to the police can be found in the description section of this YouTube video. Jen gets to the mall. She waits a little bit. Adnan's car pulls up. Adnan and Jay are together. Jay gets out of Adnan's car. This sighting of Adnan this late at night blows away Adnan's version of events. We know this sighting took place after 8.05 p.m. After the records of the pages that are found in the call logs of Adnan's phone. Let's read from Jen's statement here. I parked underneath the parking lot. One of the lights. I was underneath there. Um, I probably didn't sit there very long. Uh, I think I sat there about, I wouldn't say I sat there for more than 15 minutes waiting for them to get there. They got there and, um, they were in what I recognized as being the same car that Jay brought to my house earlier that day, which was the brown car. It had four doors or the tan car had four doors. The detective says they were both in the same vehicle. Jen responds, yes, Jay and Adnar were both in the same vehicle. Right, folks? 
Syed is not at home. Syed is with Jay and Jan after 8 p.m. in a mall, right? Let's uh, go further into her statement. Admin even talks to her and says the following, right? The detective asks Jen, what happened after they pulled up? Jen responds, um, Jay got out of the car and got in the passenger seat of my mom's car that I was driving that night. And um, Adnar said hi to me, said, hey, what's up, girl? And I was like, hey, what's up? And then we left the parking lot, and that's when Jay told me. So the detective asks, with the exchange of words between you and Adnar, hey, what's up, girl? How would you describe his mood at that time? Her response, he seemed just like he normally seems. Just like, mm, just like he was, like I remember him from high school, I guess. Right, folks, in my opinion, this is damning testimony. Somebody here is confused, perhaps lying, but Admin's version of events doesn't sync with Jen's. Right, this is beyond Jay. Understand, Jay's testimony syncs with Pusateri's. Adnan's narrative here has fallen apart. Not only is he seen at the mall after 8 p.m., But he actually talks with Jan, who, by her statements to the police, knew him from high school. When she picks up Jay, and again, this is before Jay has spoken to police, there's no Jay story that exists at this moment of time based on statements to police. When she picks up Jay, he tells her that night, in other words, this isn't a later made up story. He tells her that night that Adnan killed his girlfriend in the Best Buy parking lot and that Jay had no involvement other than having Adnan's car so he could pick up a birthday gift for his girlfriend. Jay claimed Adnan showed him the body in the trunk of the car. Jen didn't know whose car it was. Jay then tells her that he knows where Adnan got rid of the shovels. In other words, by this point, right? On the day Hay goes missing, Jen is being told that shovels were used. Right now, he and Pusateri had already driven out of Westview Mall, the parking lot. But Jay asks her to go back. When they do, he asks her to look out for mall security. He then gets out of the car and goes to the dumpsters. Jay gets back to the car and he is visibly shaken up. He asks to be taken to his girlfriend. He tells Jen that he did not want Adnan to ever talk to his girlfriend Stephanie again. She then took Stephanie's, she then took Jay to Stephanie's house and then to her friend's house, the place where they had planned to go beforehand. The next day, January 14th, 
Jay, who doesn't have a car, asked Jen to take him to the F&M parking lot where she sees Jay dump the clothes and dirty boots he wore the day before. I would argue that this evidence, and again, Jen's statement to the police, is in the description section of this video, the link to it. This evidence negates the idea that Hay vanished on her own or was abducted by strangers. Understand, Jay is talking about shovels with Jen less than eight hours after Hay goes missing. This evidence negates the lividity arguments being raised by experts because within eight hours of Hay going missing, Jay is talking about how shovels were used to bury her body. Folks, she's already dead and buried. Let's go further. The phone evidence, particularly Adnan's phones, communications with Jen at 8.04 and 8.05 p.m. Right after 8 p.m. at a time when Adnan claims he was home or on his way to the mosque after having left home. Right? Understand, the fact that Adnan's phone is communicating with Jen Pusateri's phone at 8.04 and 8.05 shows that Adnan's version of events is wrong. And that he and Jay were together at that time. Let me also say, too, that the return trip of Jay and Jan back to Westview Mall after Jay mentioned shovels so that Jay could look at and possibly wipe his fingerprints off the dump shovels shortly after, of course, Jan has seen Adnan with Jay at Westview Mall negates any claim that Hay was not buried for at least eight hours. So based on this evidence, I would say that Adnan, let me be polite here, is either mistaken or is outright lying about the timeline. Let's have a big picture. The conversation until now seems to have been focused on location evidence. Like the idea is, hey, these cell phones were unreliable. How could you say that admin, shortly after seven, when the 709 call comes in, and I believe the 716 call comes in, was at Lincoln Park. Right? Didn't the expert who testified based on cell phone tower evidence conclude that that cell phone tower evidence was unreliable? Well, the problem with that is there's eyewitness evidence. The case doesn't hinge on cell phone tower evidence. Jay is physically with Adnet at Lincoln Park. Jen Pusateri is physically at the mall 
not only sees Adnan at the mall after eight, she talks with Adnan at the mall after eight. Right, folks, you have to believe. You have to believe that Jay and Jen are both lying. You have to believe that Adnan is telling the truth. That Adnan is at home or on his way to the mosque when he gets communications on his phone from Jen's pager. Right there, communications at 8.04 and 8.05. You don't need cell phone tower evidence to know when Adnan's phone received communications. Understand Jen's testimony too, right? It's before Jay's testimony. There's an argument that Jay was somehow coached. Coached into saying what? Because understand, before Jay talks with any detectives, Jen gives a statement to the police that confirms the factual outline. Right? It confirms that Adnan told Jay that he killed Hay. It confirms that Jay sees Hay's body in the back of a car. Now we can debate where the location is, right? People want to highlight every inconsistency and say, you know what, Jay first said he saw the body at this location. Then he later said he saw the body at this location. Right, folks? before any J inconsistencies. A third party, Jen Pusateri said that J told her he saw the body in a car, in the trunk of a car. Right, so I'm sorry. To me, the defense here doesn't hold water. Right, you have not one, but two witnesses. You have a call log that shows communications with Jen's phone or Jen's pager. You have Jen talking with Adnan at the mall at a time where Adnan claims he's somewhere else. Right, you have Jay not by himself at 1.30, but with Jen's brother and Jan. He's around people. You have absolutely no motive whatsoever for Jay to decide, oh, let me kill Heyman Lee. None. The defense is so desperate that they're pulling in third parties. Though I'm curious to hear about this new evidence, right? But just understand, you have people who aren't even involved in the facts, for whom there are no phone records showing any complicity, right? The guy Hayes dating. And of course, the defense wants you to start to speculate and say, well, you know, his mom was his job supervisor and she may have lied for him and maybe he wasn't actually at work. Folks, that's intellectual outmaneuvering. We know Adnan's version of events isn't factual or at least is contradicted by multiple witnesses. I seem about to get to the 45-minute cutoff. Let's just say 
I still believe Admin is guilty. The supporters can use their video, this video, as they see fit. I hope you review the materials in the comment section of this video. Thank you.